Have you ever stumbled upon something so chilling it makes your blood run cold? Our story centers around an ordinary individual, someone not unlike you or me. Fueled by a curious spirit, they found themselves rummaging through the dusty corners of their grandparents' attic. Among the relics of the past, a peculiar item caught their eye, an old, weather-beaten journal. The journal bore the weight of time, its pages yellowed and brittle. The leather-bound cover was worn, yet it held an allure that was impossible to resist. The cryptic symbols etched into its surface suggested a history far darker and deeper than a simple diary. The markings seemed to dance and twist in the dim light, whispering secrets of the past that begged to be unveiled. As they traced their fingers over the symbols, a shiver of anticipation ran down their spine. Little did they know, this was no ordinary journal, but a door to something terrifyingly real. Curiosity, as they say, can be a dangerous thing. So it was for our protagonist, who found themselves lured into the shadowy world of their ancestors' journal. A world filled with the strange and the macabre, a world that seemed to have been crafted by a mind touched by the occult. As they began to read, they found themselves drawn into a labyrinth of cryptic symbols and disturbing narratives. Each entry was a new puzzle, each symbol a key, each narrative a door into the unsettling past. The journal was filled with accounts of eerie rituals, spectral visions, and whispers of things that lurked just beyond the veil of reality. The more they read, the more they found themselves entangled in the web of their ancestors' obsessions. The symbols became more than ink on paper, they became a language, a code that needed to be cracked. The strange happenings described in the journal began to consume our protagonist's thoughts. They found themselves chasing shadows, seeking answers in the dim light of the moon, trying to make sense of the incomprehensible. They became a detective of the uncanny, a scholar of the supernatural, a seeker in the realm of the unknown. The journal was no longer a relic of the past, it was now a part of their present, an obsession that began to cast long dark shadows over their life. But as they delved deeper into the darkness, they began to realize they might not be alone. What if the shadows aren't just shadows? What if there's something more? The world becomes an eerie playground of the unknown. Whispers slither through the darkness, a chilling chorus of voices that never belong to the living. They weave a symphony of dread, a crescendo of cold fear that seizes the heart. These are not the whispers of wind in the trees or the murmur of a distant television. They are the echoes of a forgotten past, the sighs of the unseen. In the corners of rooms, the shadows begin to dance. They twist and contort, teasing the edges of reality. They grow darker, denser, their forms taking on a life of their own. They're not just the absence of light, but entities that exist in defiance of it. Objects, once inanimate, seem to breathe with a life of their own. A book falls from a shelf without a hand to push it. A door slams shut, the wind held innocent. Each incident, a brushstroke on a canvas of terror, painting a picture that defies comprehension. Our character, once the seeker, now becomes the hunted. They feel the weight of their curiosity, a burden they never intended to bear. The journal, once a source of intrigue, now a symbol of dread. They've invited something from its pages into their world, a guest that refuses to leave. In their quest for knowledge, they'd opened a door they couldn't close. Can you ever escape something that lurks within your own home? A question that echoed in the mind of our character as desperation took hold. The journal, the source of this torment, had to go. So they decided to burn it, hoping the flames would consume the entity it unleashed. As the journal crackled and turned to ash in the fire, a sense of relief washed over them. The air seemed lighter, the shadows less threatening. The house, once teeming with an unspeakable dread, returned to its familiar, comforting self. It was as if the terror had never been. The rooms that once echoed with unseen whispers were silent. The chill that had seeped into every corner was replaced by the warmth of hearth and home. But the question remains. The journal was gone, but was the entity truly banished? Or had they merely silenced it, for now? The unsettling possibility of its return, a haunting resolution indeed.